Hi, and welcome to this episode of Tech for PD, the web show for technology about product development. I'm Jim Brown, and I'm one of your hosts today. And I'm Chad Jackson. I'm your other host. And today we're going to be talking about CAD and whether or not it can be used for design as well as documentation. Great. So here's how the show works. First, we're going to start with a little bit of background. Uh, we're going to set the stage for the conversation. Then Chad and I are going to have a debate. You as the viewer get to determine who the winner of the debate is. Uh, but what that means is for the loser, uh, there's actually some very real consequences. So for example, the loser of today's debate will have to do a polar bear swim. It's going to be cold. I hope you <laughs> like it. Let's get started. So next, it's time to set the stage. We want to offer a little context before we dive into the debate. So years ago, uh, when parametrics and features first came out, it really revolutionized the CAD industry. Um, it really changed the way that engineering organizations not only developed 3D models, but also uh, how they made changes to the drawings as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even recently, um, some research that I've been doing has been talking about uh, the benefits of rules-based design and building intelligence into models, um, with modular approaches and, and others as well. Um, that really provide a lot of power and help automate a lot of the engineering process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it hasn't all been positive, True. right? The, the way these features work is uh, they often have references that they use against each other. And that can empower a lot of intelligence <clears throat> in a design and in a model. However, um, it's kind of like a Jenga game, right? right? So you got the tower of pieces and a change to a feature very early on in the model can have a dramatic effect on the features that happen later on, uh, that occur later on in the model. Sometimes unintended, sometimes unknown, and sometimes they can cause a failure. Right, absolutely. And, and the real challenge with that is, you know, the essence of, of designing. Sometimes you follow some very strict rules and, and, you know, known paths, but other times you really want to innovate, iterate, explore new territory and new ideas. And, um, you know, those same features and, and power can yeah. then turn into constraints that can slow down the innovation process or, in fact, cause people to have to go back and recreate things. Yeah, that's a great point. So, however, in recent years, there have been some big changes. So, uh, you see the emergence of direct modeling is uh, another great way to create 3D models that's very easy to pick up. Uh, also, there's been a lot of advances in terms of sketching and, and 2D capabilities. So there have been changes. Yeah, well, and the big vendors have been all over this, right? I mean, you, yeah. you've seen uh, PTC with Creo, um, you've seen uh, Siemens with Synchronous Technology, Autodesk has been working on this quite a bit. There's a lot of new right. capabilities that uh, some of the established players have really brought to market. However, it's not just the big guys. True. Right? I mean, you have folks like Space Claim out there and Kubotech that have been really, in some cases, uh, real innovators in the industry in, in bringing direct modeling and other modeling techniques to the fore. So there has been change from smaller guys, too. Absolutely. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the debate. Jim, so today, can engineers use these tools to design products? Yeah, I, I, I do think so. I, I think the advances in technology and in design tools really has allowed us to move from having to have specialty drafters um, documenting designs and really allow engineers uh, to be the ones that are documenting their own innovations and own designs as they go. Okay, all right. I actually agree uh, with you there. Uh, I agree that engineers can use these tools today to design. I, I don't know if those specialty um, roles will go away. I think there might still be folks that focus on drawings and the engineers focus on the models to actually do their design work. Um, but I agree with you there. So, so let me ask you this though, what do you think is the most critical capability that has enabled this type of change? Oh, I, I think the advances in 3D design technologies, um, okay. the ability to um, use direct modeling, but also to use it not just on uh, quote unquote dumb geometry, if you want to call it that, but being okay. able to use uh, manipulation techniques where you actually address and understand the intelligence in the model and be able to use that to enable changes. 
I think that uh, a lot of advances in the 2D realm mm -hmm. have been uh, actually more relevant. So when you look at their activities, engineers' activities around sketching and diagramming, really that starts to cut right to the core of what design is all about. Um, and that often is very, very important for engineers. That's important as well as the ability to transition from 2D to 3D, right? So not just right. throw the 2D work away, but actually bring it forward and use it as the basis for a 3D model. Oh, absolutely. And I wouldn't disagree with the importance of 2D at all, but in terms of which is more important and which mm. has made the bigger advances, I would definitely say it's 3D. And, and so why? Um, 3D really gives you the ability to design for the enterprise. You, when you've got a 3D model, there's so much more you can do with it. You can design for, um, you know, interrogate it for, for weight. You can interrogate it for the materials. You can use it to design for manufacturability and serviceability. Mm -hmm. There's so much more that is accessible in a 3D model and usable. Um, and, you know, even outside of engineering, right? When you, when you look at a 3D model and you use that as sort of a visual prototype, that gives something that other people can actually access and get input outside of just mm -hmm. engineering. So I, I, think, okay. I think that's just more important. So I'll concede that there's, there's actually a lot of value there. <clears throat> and I agree that that can make an impact. However, um, I think engineers use these 2D types of tools often very early on in the process. Um, and often they, they use graph paper and napkins, you know, that's kind of what they're doing today. Um, so I think, you know, getting the 3D model, which often can occur a little bit later in right. the design cycle, can have all those benefits. But I think that the 2D capabilities let them explore, iterate, look at options, alternatives. That has a huge impact. Right. And I think, I think the more they can be moving that into a 3D world, the sooner <laughs> they can the more uh, you know, it's accessible by the enterprise. So just to be clear in terms of what it is that we're saying, um, I'm saying that I think 3D has made the biggest impact in terms of making design tools accessible to the engineer mm -hmm. as opposed to having somebody else document it after the fact. Mm -hmm. And you're saying? 2D tools, 2D advances, and the ability to take 2D representations into 3D are more important. So now we come to the segment uh, that we call the crystal ball, and we talk a little bit about what we see happening in the future. Um, first of all, you know, as much as we've, as we've talked about some of the new changes uh, and direct modeling, uh, we don't see the power of parametrics going away. There's some yeah. situations that is absolutely um, the best solution. Um, I think we'll start to see more companies using not one or the other, but maybe a hybrid Above, approach yeah. and, you know, and maybe even in different areas of the business um, using Great. different uh, capabilities. Um, but I think we'll, we'll definitely see a lot more of that going forward. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. If you can't tell from me shaking my head vigorously. But uh, I think another interesting thing to watch is, you know, you and I have seen this in the industry for a long time. There's been a big push to try and get 3D out to the enterprise yeah. um, and you know it's met limited success over time I think now with these changes uh, it stands a very good chance of success uh, and it it makes nothing but sense I mean there's a lot of value to be gained by getting 3d models pushed out to all those other organizations yeah absolutely and I, I think one of the things that we we definitely agree on is that there's been a tremendous amount of innovation and will continue to be a tremendous amount of investment in core CAD technology. Um, so for anybody that thought that um, CAD was a, either a boring technology space or a mature market, um, right. there's a lot going on. Um, it is not a boring space at all. And uh, so it's, it's going to be fun to stay tuned yeah. to and understand how things are moving forward. It's been quite a turnaround. But you know, what's interesting is a few areas that CAD could invest in to, to really make a big leap forward, uh, there's several opportunities, right? So you got mobility platforms, yeah. right? I mean, they, you almost see every kind of application moving to uh, to the those types of platforms. But also haptics. Um, so using uh, your hands as a means to manipulate designs, not just for visualization. I mean, we're talking about things like the Kinect and you know similar types of devices, but actually using that for design work as well. Um, it's it's more intuitive. You can get past uh, kind of the barrier that the UI presents, right. you know, with usability and ease of use. Um, so I, I think those are two areas that represent opportunities for growth uh, for this space. So a lot to look forward to in the future. 
Uh, but more importantly, perhaps, now is the time in the show that we get into the consequence phase. And this is uh, where we get to share with you um, who got the most votes on their opinion in the debate last time. So don't forget, you know, don't forget to vote for this, uh, this debate today. Yep. Um, but for right now, let's see what happened last time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jim. Last episode, we debated on whether or not social technologies were ready for product development. And it's time for the consequences. Mm -hmm. Do you still think that social is not ready for product development? I do. I don't think it's ready. All right. Let's see what the audience had to say. Okay. One, two... Three. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, we'd also like to take this opportunity to thank PTC, uh, our sponsor, for making this episode uh, real. And thank you for watching. We hope you gained something valuable out of this. We look forward to talking to you again on the next episode.